Okay, so we got the Excel over here. Next question. That, okay, this is pretty impressive. I'm not even sure if I know how to do this in Excel. And it just gives us this clean answer over here. Chatting with your own structured data. So these could be Excel files, CSV files. How do you go about that? We all know that these large language models like ChatGPT or if you use them through the APIs, that they're pretty good at handling text-based questions. But what about large tables, large databases with hundreds, potentially millions of records? We can't just send all of that data to the API because we quickly run into the token limit and we cannot bypass that. So how do you go about that if you want to incorporate that kind of like data analysis capabilities into your large language model apps? Well, that's what I'm going to show you in today's video. I'm going to introduce you to the Pandas Data Frame Agents Toolkit from the Langchain Library. Damn, that's a lot of words. But that's what I'm going to show you today. So how you can load your own Excel files or CSV files and then ask questions about those data sets using text versus just having to write out some code to do some thorough data analysis. And now you can use this to analyze your own data sets or your company data sets, if you are of course allowed to share that with these models. Also potentially integrate it into a large language model app that you might be currently building for yourself or for a client like I'm doing right now. So that's what we're going to cover in today's video. Let's get into it. All right, so today we will be working again from the Langchain Experiments repository and in particularly the pandas agent directory that is in there. So again, all source material, all links will be down in description. But before we really dive into it, I want to quickly mention that this is a technical tutorial. So there are some requirements for you to follow along. So a couple of weeks ago, I created a video about using Flowwise AI where you can easily like drag and drop these elements together, upload a data set, PDF, whatever, ask questions. This is not a video like this. This is a video on how to actually build the underlying mechanisms that are used in apps like Flowwise. So this is more for the technical people that really wanna understand how they can build this on their own. So you need to understand how Python works, basic understanding of Langchain, if that's new to you, check out my previous video where I did an introduction. So we are all on the same page here and you need an open AI API key and GPT-4 is not required for this. So with that out of the way, we can actually get into this project. And again, you can clone this repository so you can follow along. I have set this up in my usual setup within VS Code. So that is what I will be running you through. We'll be running you through a, a use case, a kind of like example that I want to get into to really put the Pandas data frame agent to the test, basically, to see the capabilities, how to use it, but also identify the limitations and areas where you have to be careful with this. So throughout this demonstration, we will be using a data set that we got from Kaggle. So we can link to the official place over here where this data set is stored, basically, but it's data science salaries 2023. So this is the data set that we'll be using. It's available in the data folder, but you can also download it from the original source. And if we have a look at it, it's basically a very large sheet with about what we got over here. So about 4,000 records or so, little less of data science salaries, where we have a job title, employment type, salary, currency, the total amount, then converted to USD. So a very interesting data set that we will be using to do some analysis on. So if you want to follow along, you can set up the experiment using the instructions over here. And I want to start off with kind of like a reference point. And that is by using, like I've said, a single tool and then use Google basically and some math to kind of get like a baseline of what we can expect. So the goal is to analyze this data set and get an idea of the overall like yearly annual salary of a data scientist. So if I spin up this interactive session over here within VS Code and I, I load everything, I load the environment variables, I am first going to use the SERP API tool. And if you want to follow along with, with this particular block of code, you would need that uh, API key as well. It's free to set up, but it's not required. Everything else will just require uh, the OpenAI API key. But what we are going to do, and that is why uh, I want to show the difference basically between a tool and a toolkit, is I first want to provide an agent 
a Langchain agent with the SERP API and the math, the, so the calculator, basically. And do a quick Google search based on the question, what is the median salary of a senior data scientist in 2023? And then what is this figure given there is a 10% increment? So it's an interesting question where we first have to do a Google search and then also apply some math. And this is really where we get to see the power of agents basically to understand the order in which to execute those actions. So I'm going to initialize the model. And like I said, we'll be using the text DaVinci 03. So now GPT-4, set the temperature to zero to make the results uh, a little more predictable. Then I'm going to load the tools, initialize the agent, and then we can basically run it and see the magic happening. So right now with Langchain, I sometimes get an error. I see also see other people online having this error. Um, still seems to work, uh, so it doesn't really matter. Let's see what it is actually coming up with right now. So it says here that what it found is basically the following. So for women, 140K, for men, 165K, and then it takes the salary from the man and then multiplies or increases that by 10% and gets to the final answer. And that is also what we're seeing over here. Let's do a quick check to make sure that the actual calculations are correct. So let's see times 1.1. All right. And that seems to be accurate. Okay. So that is basically our baseline right now to illustrate, hey, this is how we can do some kind of like data analysis, gather some information and then do a multiplication. But now what if we want to get more specific and use our own data? So that's really where the pandas data frame agent comes in. And... I'm going to show you first of all like how you can start with this by loading your own data so i have two examples over here first is a csv and another one is uh, how to load the excel so we do that with the pandas library through python uh, we just import it spd and then we can read it both will literally result in the same data frame so here is the one loaded through csv and here is the one loaded through excel and as you can see they're identical so you could use either one. Okay. And now the second step is to initialize the pandas data frame agent, which you can see over here. And that is as simple as create pandas data frame agent. And we put in the large language model that we defined over here. So the model and the temperature and any other additional parameters that you want to feed it. And then we also provide it with the data frame itself. So then you have this like combination and this is why this is why lang chain is so convenient. You now have this agent that has access to this model and the data. So it's very convenient. And here you can now see how we can start to perform some basic data exploration by just calling the agent.run and then asking our questions. So let's start with the first example over here and show what's actually going on under the hood. And by setting for both to true, the agent basically spits out all of the um, intermediate steps and thought processes so we have 3755 rows and 11 columns and here we can actually see that that is correct but how did it get to that point so here you can see the thought i need to find out the shape of the data frame so then it applies an action and through that action it can basically run python code and the input is df.shape which would be the actual code that you need in order to execute on this but the model understands this and then is also able to execute on that. So then it has an observation and then the thought, I now know the final answer and it uses the capabilities of the large language models to present the information also in such a way uh, that it's, it's a nice answer. So first is just like providing us with the observation like you get when you get DF shape, you actually get an interpretable answer basically that you could for example provide to an end user in an application so that it understands okay so these are the rows and these are the columns versus if you just see this uh tuple what it is over here it could also be the other way around is it like what is it it doesn't give you any context so that is what i find very cool about working with agents so are there any missing values do the same thing okay so df is null.sum okay no missing values what are the columns so it understands these very basic data exploration questions basically 
Uh, here you can see we get the columns and then here we get a nice little array of all the columns that are in there. And now what I will do is I will continue to run these experiments and then get back to you with the results basically. So we're going one step further and doing, doing some multi-step data exploration where we have to basically pipe or chain multiple operations together on a data frame in order to get uh, to the answer. And we can also work with multiple data frames. So that is how you would go uh, about that. So you can just provide it an array, a list of data frames, and it can also make sense of that. So let me actually run all of this again, and then I will walk you through my observations. All right, so I've switched to a Jupyter Notebook, which is also available on the GitHub. So you can check that out because basically here we can store the results, the outputs basically. So we can uh, make a comparison basically, and also check or see the somewhat random uh, non-deterministic nature of these models, especially uh, if we look at the initial search result using the SERP API. Uh, like a few days ago, I was getting a completely different answer from what I was getting this morning, basically when I was running it. But for the data sets using the Pandas data frame agent, they seem to be more deterministic in terms of their, their output. So, we started off with the basic data exploration, but now let's actually look into the multiple step data exploration. So for example, which are the top five jobs that have the highest median salary? And here we can see that if we really want to get to this answer, we have to like perform a group by, select a column, take the median, sort values, ascending by true, take top five. So this is pretty cool in the sense that these are quite some steps that if you were a data analyst or data scientist might have to like really think through, maybe even look some up some of the syntax on the pandas library to really get to that answer. So it's quite interesting to me that to see that the capabilities basically, and here we can see like, so head of machine learning, principal data architects, data analytics lead are like the top performers over here. And now if we go to the second one, so what is the percentage of data scientists who are working full time? So this is another interesting one where if we look at the original data set, we have employment type and it's basically these abbreviations. But if we look at the question over here, so it, it understands that FT means full time. So that is nice. So we don't have to provide it with all the context. And here you can see uh, employment type and then it basically uh, gives a summary of that. So that is very cool to see. It does that through the value counts methods of the Pandas library. And now here's another interesting one. So which company location has the most employees working remotely? Now, if we look at the data, um, you have the remote ratio over here, which I, it's either like hundred, zero, or there are some in there which are, are 50, if I believe. But it's mostly like, here you see 50, but it's most like either like 100% remote or 0% remote, I guess. But the thing is, if we look at the thought process over here, so we do a group by, company location, remote ratio, and then take the max basically. And here you can see that uh, the answer is like US. US has the most employees working remotely. But that is just because it's the last one in the list basically. So here it makes an error. So it doesn't understand. So it just sorts and it takes the max, but it doesn't understand that there could be multiple values of 100, which would all be the same basically. So that is a limitation that you definitely have to keep in mind when you are working with an agent or toolkit like this. But can it also create a plot? So get median salaries of senior level data scientists for each company size and plot them in a bar plot. So what are we doing? It says, okay, experience level, senior, group by, company size. Then we get the salary in USD, median, and the bar plot. So this is, again, chaining quite some steps together. And then, boom, here it is. So this is very cool, but it does not work to save it. It cannot uh, save the file. So that is a limitation, but it can show you uh, the plot itself, which is very interesting to see. And then finally, let's look at an example where we work with multiple data frames. So how many rows and columns are there for each data frame? So it understands again, so I have to use the shape, but I now have to do that twice. Shape one, shape two, and then it provides us with the answers. And then here is another one, which is another error that I encountered basically. So 
how many people were hired for each of the data frames. So we have two data frames right now, 2022, 2023. Uh, what are percentages of experience levels? And here, what's interesting is that the thought process itself is okay. So it gets the value counts, normalizes it to get the, the percentages, basically. But then the funny thing is, it is it's not quite able to add up all of the numbers. So if you look at the totals over here for all the experience levels, if you add this up, it doesn't result in this number over here. Uh, same for the second data frame, but it does get the percentages correct based on the normalized value over here. So this is again something interesting where these large language models are uh, generally pretty bad at math and simple calculations. So it understands this. these are the steps that I have to take. And then if you just have to like copy paste the values over here, it can do that. But then just adding these four numbers is difficult for these models. So that again is then something where you would need the math tool, for example. So that is another limitation that I found while running through all of these experiments. But other than that, most of the answers are correct. And especially like the thought process. So the actual pandas code that you need to generate in order to get to those answers is generally correct. So what did we learn from this experiment with the pandas data frame agent? Well, it is generally useful if you really want to do a question and answer kind of interaction with your data. So it's not necessarily meant to do data manipulation like in place because it cannot, cannot store uh, the intermediate results. It's just you provide it with the data and the question and you get back the answer, but it doesn't like store the manipulations is what I found. It's also useful to double check these answers because like we've seen, we did run into some error. So with uh, in all of the experiments we did, we've, we ran into two errors that were not correct. And then what's also cool is that it can recognize context or values based on, on a description. So we saw that in the example of FT referring to full-time position. Also, it does not remember the actual conversation right now. There could potentially be some ways to work around this, but when there are more than two steps in the prompt, it does not handle it perfectly right now. This is also what we saw with the, the math uh, example where there were multiple steps and then it had to refer back to uh, add on basically these values and it made a mistake. So that could either be losing track of the conversation or not understanding the math. Not sure about that. And you could potentially save time in data manipulation as a data analyst or data scientist by using this as like kind of like an assistant versus just like going to, to Google or going to ChatGPT and trying to figure out how to uh, get the exact Pandas code to get your answer basically but do it directly using these agents. So you could also use it as a tool. And of course, all of this would be very interesting to build into an actual application where you can let the user like upload data, then ask questions. So I think this is really what we will see once Copilot for, for example, the Microsoft Office stack comes out and this will be added to Excel. So I think you can expect like kind of like the similar like functionality in terms of what you can do like straight into Excel. But as of right now, this is the way to go about it. And this is also how you would implement it, like I've said, into an application, if that's something you're interested in. All right, and that's it for this video. Thank you as always for watching. Please hit that like button. Also subscribe to the channel. You'll really help me out. And you also show YouTube that you wanna see more content like this. So it's a win-win. Also, let me know if there are any topics uh, that you want me to cover. So this could be about AI, data science, large language models, Langchain. Let me know down in the comments. I'm open to checking that out. See if it could be helpful to, to other people as well. And if it's something I really want to dive into. Also, make sure to check out the two links in the description. One is for my email newsletter. For That is really for people that are serious about learning data science and artificial intelligence. And the other one is for the Data Freelancer Mastermind, which is a community where we really focus on launching and scaling your freelancing business as a data professional. So if that's something you're interested in, go check it out. All right, that's it. And then I'll see you in the next one.